morning. Welcome to the Pitch Eye Chronicles, where fans become family. I am Uncle Tats. I'm here with Donald and Rob, and another series win for the Yankees. It's amazing, but it can't always be all sunshine with the with the Yankees, right? We call it as we see it. That should have been a sweep. Our defense had a terrible series. Really, and it wasn't really just yesterday. We're going to get into Glaber and what the hell's going on with him. But, you know, Rizzo had a really tough time at, at, at first base. You know, the a lot of balls that had that could have been scooped, should have been scooped. Maybe, you know, just a few too many. And he's like, All right, where are you throwing the ball? I'm right here. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, he can't catch everything. So, you know, he, he, took, a, he took a beating at first base. But the defense was so, you know, was very subpar, and th- that's something that you can get away with it for a series, maybe a game, but you got to learn how you, they got to figure out how to clean that shit up really quick because it could snowball into where it's going to cost you game after game after game. Mm-hmm. So the poster boy of bad defense, it's got to be Torres. We we we, we got to get that out of the way. The thing that – I'm watching that play in, in extras. He's bobbling the ball. I'm going, just take the out at first. And he tries to get the play out of the home plate. That ball was hit hard enough where if he would have fielded it cleanly, that could have been a double play, boom, done. You know, we're, we're off to the sunset. But no, this is Gleyber Torres. You know, and it's not like he's doing anything with the bat to kind of be like, all right, you know, at least we got getting something out of him. His productivity has been nil this season. And the biggest problem with that is it's a walk year for him. It's a contract year for him. Great point. You never see this bad play in a contract year. This is when everybody all of a sudden remembers how they became a professional athlete and their all-stars, Hall of Fame career. You know, they'll have a Hall of Fame year, not Gleyber Torres. And unfortunately, this is why we are we we have him for the year. The the time to trade him was a couple of years ago. The Yankees have really you know early in his career they did him no favors by putting him you know at shortstop right. and waiting and waiting and waiting. They this kid he gets nothing. They they mishandle him completely. And then when they do say you know what we're gonna put you back where you were at your best. And he never was the best again. And to me, that's a problem. It's seriously a problem. And you have to start to think, is he even worth the qualifying offer? It is him taking a qualifying offer for $20 million a year or whatever it's going to be, is it worth, you know, if he signs somewhere else? At this, The way he's playing, it's an if. He, he might not get a contract next year. Who's going to want to take that on? You know, so those are questions that have to come into play. He might get a minor league contract, but I don't. A minor league contract. I don't. Calm down. down. Calm down. It's sixteen games in. No, we're not doing this sixteen games into the season. He's going to get a minor league contract. Come on, it's he's still a good player. We're not going to give up on him after sixteen games. His defense has been bad, but so is the entire infield. Volpe hasn't looked good. Rizzo's looked terrible. And Cabrera's arm is either really good or awful. Let's not place all the blame for the bad defense on poor Glaber Torres. Eventually, he will start hitting, and his defense hopefully will get better. But that the same has to be said about the entire infield. That goes for Volpe as well. And I just praised the guy two day, three days ago. It's not just Glaber Torres. Yeah, he was terrible yesterday, but that was one of the worst defensive series I've ever seen from this infield. Anthony Rizzo already has, like, what, six errors? Is he going to get a minor league contract too? Come on, like let's be a little bit fair here. Glaber Torres is going to get a contract next year. He's still 27. He's still going to hit 250 or better, 20 plus bombs. He'll drive in runs. You're just hoping for average defense at this point. Maybe he's thinking too much, but the same thing can be said about everybody because Anthony Rizzo has been terrible. Cabrera has been bad, and so is Volpe to a degree. Volpe's probably been the best of the group, and yet he hasn't been that good compared to last year even. So let's – Let's, let's calm down with Glaber. I know it looks bad right I'm now, but we just, <laughs> okay. But you're you're getting it's get fine to be pissed off, but you're saying this dude's gonna get a minor league contract, 
at 27? Come on, like this 16 games in, it's not like we're in August. It's April. <laughs> we're going to give up on the season already on him? Come on, Tats, be better than that. Yeah, minor league contracts are ridiculous. I don't know where that's come from. It's a top 10 second baseman in the American League, bro. But uh, he is uh, he has been – I mean, he's playing like it, but it's not him, but it's bad. Like, it's frustrating because he cost us the game. Like, he absolutely cost us the game, actually. Uh, he absolutely did. He should have taken the out at first. Um he is a low IQ baseball player. I don't think there's any doubt about that. This has been – he is a space cadet. He's been like that for years. He's just – it's very frustrating to watch him because he just doesn't make the right reads at second base. He just doesn't make the right play. Got really good range for a second baseman, but he just – he's just lazy, lazy. Like that play that cost us a couple runs the game before, what was he doing? He made – he got to the ball – and then he just sidearmed it, and it went about 20 feet away from the freaking bag. I mean, what are you doing? That's just laziness. That's not. That's just somebody that's not switched on. So I'm very pissed at that. Like I'm, I'm more pissed at that air uh, than than the one where he bobbled it because it was a hard hit ball, and he was slightly panicking. But the the one where. I think it was the game previously, the three-two game, where he uh, he got to the ball and then he just side-armed it for no airmailed. reason. Yeah, airmailed it, and it was purely out of laziness. That was just what it was. It was a pure laziness. It was he wasn't switched on. He wasn't taking it seriously, and it and it and it flew like ten feet uh, wide at first base. Uh, um, terrible, absolutely unacceptable. That's the kind of stuff. That drives you nuts. And that's the kind of stuff that will cost him a contract. Now, it's not to the point where he's going to get a minor league offer, but uh, it's going to cost him a contract. That was, yeah, I was probably a little a serious harsh on that. And I don't know how the Yankees could even contemplate it at this point. It's still April, but I, his his numbers are spectacular. Um, I've got his uh, – let's have a look at his baseball savant page uh, because there is some uh, – there's some stuff here which uh, which isn't too good, uh, and we'll, we should have a, a quick look at. So uh, we will have a look at that here. So we got uh, Gleyber Torres minus five batting run value in the fifth percentile. I mean, I remember. I know it's sixteen games in, but we're just going by what we see. Is the page up? Yep, guys. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. You're good. Um, fielding run value, average. Base running value has been good. So he's actually been excellent on the bases in the 80th percentage. Batting run value, piss poor. Fifth percentile. That's absolutely ridiculous. 17th percentile in expected batting average. 13th percentage in uh, extra slug. Uh, that's really freaking bad. Barrel percentage, which Glaber's normally excellent at. 29th percentile, hard hit percentage, 24th percentile. Sweep swap spot percentage is below average. That's something that he's normally really good at, barreling the ball. Excellent in terms of this. Excellent chase percentage. He's not chasing bad pitches, so in the 95th percentile there. He's not striking out too much necessarily, but it's still not great, below average. Um now let's have a look at the, the rest of, of what we see here. Range is good. As I say, his range is fine. 70th percentile. Uh, arm strength ain't there. And sprint speed is almost below average. Then you get into the more specifics here. Um, he's not hitting fastballs. Got a 192 batting average. Uh, and it's to the point where look at look at what he's doing against four-seam fastballs. A minus three run value against four-seam fastballs. He's just not hitting it. Minus two against changeups. So, I mean, obviously we're getting into the, the deep dives, but it's clear that he's not barreling the baseball. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> these numbers are horrible. Absolutely horrible. However, um, do you know who's worse? Despite the RBIs yesterday, Anthony Rizzo is worse. Look at this. Look at this, guys. This is Horrible. Um, 
everywhere. His defense is horrible. Look at that. Minus one. Fielding value. Um, barrel percentage is, is, is the worst I've ever seen. It's actually in the one percentile, which means he's the worst in baseball at barreling the baseball right now. The worst. He's in the one percentile. That's impossible. Absolutely horrible. 24th percentile. Extra, look at this. It's horrifying. So that's the problem, guys. Anthony Rizzo, he's in the he's in the middle of our order, and he's giving you that. He's not barreling the baseball. He's a Glaber Torres. So, I, I mean, obviously, it's not just Glaber. It's Rizzo, too. Well, you know, we can get into Rizzo. I'm just – Torres is the one that's pissing me off. It really is. I, I, I don't – you know, yeah, maybe – yeah, the minor league. Yeah, that's that. That was a little harsh. You know, I kind of went a little overboard in my rant there. You know, I mean, but it, it doesn't take away the fact that he's done shit for us. You know, and yes, it's sixteen games, but you know, it's he's got to do better. He's he's not even showing that there's any life to him. I don't. I just. I I don't see it. I really don't. You know, it's not just sometimes it's not just you know, he's hitting it to bad luck. We saw that with Judge, you know, and he's starting to wake up a little bit. You know, he had a great series, but Torres, man, look, if you if you're not producing with the bat, you cannot let it affect your defense. You have to thrive in one of the other, you know, to avoid you know, any vitriol towards your play. And it seems like they're just kind of piggybacking each other of what could I be, what, you know, what could I struggle at more? That's the concerning I mean, part. I think he's got this right here, man. Look, the defense of the infield is not great overall. There is a little concern. Yeah, because let's look at it. Um, Trevino is, is – he's uh, not catching like he's normally accustomed to catching. Like he's a platinum gold glove winner, and his, he's been average to below average. Um, in terms of metrics with him. Rizzo, as we've just seen, he's normally a gold glove first baseman. He's actually been below average. Gleyber Torres, normally an average second baseman. He's actually below average. Uh, third baseman, uh, Cabrera has been phenomenal offensively, but defensively he ain't there. He's not making good throws. Uh, Volpe's are only, I would say, plus, but I do need to have a look at the metrics. I think I might do that just now, but he's the only plus that I can see in the infield. And you can see it. There just seems to be a lack of confidence. I don't have the confidence that these guys are going to make routine plays right now. And it is costing us runs, and it's very frustrating because um, our bullpen is very much focused on weak contact. There's not a lot of guys that are just wipe-out strikeout guys. There's a lot of uh, contact guys. And our infield is horrendous, which is not necessarily great bedfellows. Uh, our, our starting rotation for the most part, three-fifths of it, are very much weak contact guys inducing ground balls. What do we not have? People that can gobble up ground balls right now. So, uh, I'm sorry. I'm starting to miss DJ LeMakeu. I don't know about you guys. Yep. So, um, missing him big time. And yeah, Peraza. You are. So, there Emperor. it is. <laughs> missing three <laughs> infielders. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. These guys don't actually can defend their position. Here's so. the thing with Glaber Torres. He's streaky. We know this. He can go on a two-week tear starting tonight, for all we know. That's what he does. And Sunil, I go after Tats out of love. Don't make me go after yes. you, too. I saw your earlier comment. If you want to start with the bad jokes, we can get into it. I'm just messing around. However, I just I felt like I needed to say that because it's we are 16 games in. We know Glaber Torres is a streaky player. He can look terrible for two weeks and look like the best player in the sport for two weeks, and then the cycle will continue. He will get it going. But right now, yes, it is concerning. But that the same can be said about every single infielder because either Volpe's throws are perfect or they're way offline. He's not mm. perfect over there. Cabrera, you never know what you're going to get with him, and Rizzo cannot catch the ball right now. Like he has, what I think he, I really think he's just six errors right now, which he had like 12 or something last year. We're 16 games in. He's looking like he doesn't know where the ball is going. So Facts. will it turn around? Yes. 
But is it bad right now? Sure, because it just costs us a game. We could be 13 and three instead of 12 and four. But I think it's a, it's a good thing that this is the big issue right now because it's something that can be corrected. It's not like the entire lineup is struggling to hit. We scored seven runs yesterday. And it's not like the bullpen blew that game. To me, it was the defense that blew that game. I think the bullpen oh, yeah. did its job. Oh, Gonzalez did his job. Clay Holmes did his job. Birdie did his job. Even to a degree, Ferguson, if not for that bad defense, probably would have gotten out of that. He wasn't great. But it's just we need the defense to be better. When the defense is better, everything else will fall in line. And that's the biggest issue right now. And once that gets better – that we're not going to have much to complain about. We're still 12 and four and we've won every series. That's a great sign. The defense will be better. And it's just, it sucks that it's happening right now, but thankfully it's 16 games in and it's April and it's not with two weeks to play in September. And we're costing us big wins. It's a great thing that it's, it's not a great thing, but it's better that it's happening now because you have a whole season to correct it and it will get corrected. But if you want to be positive, I do think that it's important to be semi-positive. We did win two two out of three games, and we won the series. Uh, here's something to be positive about. Anthony Volpe! <laughs> Holy mother of God! Look at all those reds, baby. And actually, his fielding is phenomenal. 90th percentile in fielding run value. Uh, 93rd percentile in range. Uh, that's remarkable. So this guy is just the absolute – he's a baller, baby. Look at all those reds. So um, he's he's just been revolutionary. He's a, he's just revelatory, I should say. He's just been phenomenal. So we've got something to be very excited about. His name is Anthony Volpe. Um, he's he's been our best defender in the infield. No no, no 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 question about that. And that's why we moved him to the top of the order, people. So for all those content creators that were like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why are they taking Gleyber Torres out of the number one spot and putting Volpe up? That's why. Because Volpe's actually hitting, baby. That's why. That's why. It doesn't take a genius. Volpe actually can make contact with the baseball. He's actually barreling up fastballs, as you saw all those reds right there. Torres isn't. And he actually can run. Torres can't. So that's actually helpful. So, yeah, that's why we put Volpe at the top of the order. Believe it or not, Aaron Boone does actually know what he's talking about. Yeah, and, he, you know, the other thing with Boone is, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, he moved, you know, he moved Volpe to the top of the order, and it was, yeah, it was more, you know, with Torres. But he stuck with it. He's actually been very consistent with his lineups, and I think that's a big, that's not even a big, that's a huge part of why they're 12 and 4. Big part of it. You know, consistency, they're not walking into the stadium every day. How many times have we bitched? You know, saying that, you know, you never know day to day what the order's going to be. The only one, the only one we knew where he was going to hit, we knew Judge was going to be in the two spot. That was it, you know. And then once it got to, you know, the the chase for sixty two, they put a lead off, and they they left it there. Everybody else, nobody knew where the hell they were going to be playing every day. True. Didn't even know what position they were playing. But next thing, the next thing you know, he's chewing on the power uh, the power strip. <laughs> <laughs> Not tight, uh, dog. The dog is, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't make it up, I swear. Um, it, the consistency in the lineup has been a key part of it, and all this, you know. I also heard, you know, that, that you know the bullpen's got to do better. They need to, you know, they should be striking these guys out. Well, if you, you know, these are not strikeout guys. You know, these are ground ball pitchers, which is why I'm putting such an emphasis on the poor defense today. Because, you know, the the bullpen did their job. They kept the ball on the ground for the ball, you know, until that last sack fly. But they had the ball on the ground. The defense is the reason why those base runners were on to begin with, not the pitching. Because you know what you're going to get from the pitcher. You know you're going to get, you know, they're going to be low to the zone, and they're going to induce the ground ball. If the defense did their job. We don't even have to worry about extra innings. So let, let, let's. I, I don't want to put this on the pitching you know, at all, because the pitching, you know, yeah, Nesta had a rough start. In theory, he's your number five guy. What do you expect? You know, he's not going to put up zeros. You know, he's not going to go eight innings every game. 
Because if Cole's in, if Cole is here, he is not you know considered the top of the the top of the rotation guy. So yeah, but, let's let's touch on that uh, Cortez outing. Um, I know he was trending for the herky jerky and then the fake throw. Um, what what do you make of that, Rob? You just. <laughs> I saw Dan Clark, that douchebag, uh, he said something like oh, it, it kills the integrity of the game or some nonsense. It's the same guy that wants Trevor Bauer back in the league. But, yeah, go on about Nestor Cortez killing the integrity, you goofball. Anyway, um, Nestor didn't get helped by the defense also, but he also gave a cookie to uh, their best player and Jose yeah. Ramirez, so that's a no-no. Don't do that. Um also, we are quickly realizing that if he's not playing the Marlins, this is what Nestor Cortez is. He's a five yes. inning, maybe five inning guy yep. that's going to give up three or a little, maybe around three or four runs to start, which you can live with that as a number five starter. But my God, do we need Garrett Cole back? Because I, I don't know what we're going to get from Nestor because he looked like he was cruising. And then next thing you know, he's throwing like a freaking 86 mile an hour cutter right down the dick to Jose Ramirez. And what do you think he's going to do? Send it into orbit, which he did. So that, that hurt. Um, defense didn't help him. Like I said, but yeah, I, I just, I wish we had a little bit better. I might, I might ask him to do what he did against the Marlins every start. That's impossible, but don't give their best player the easiest pitch to hit. And we might've won that game, but I mean, overall, I guess you're going to live with it from Nestor right now. I think when Cole comes back, there's a real conversation. If it's him or Luis Heal that gets the nod or bump out of the rotation, I think it should be Cortez, but they could put it, give it to Heal just to minimize his innings. But yeah, Nestor has to be overall better. But I mean, I mean, that's again, a weak Guardians lineup. There was only yeah. like one or two guys. Yeah, uh, Naylor and Ramirez. That's Rich it. over the River Kwan and Ramirez are the only two really that particularly concern me. Um, and just pitch around them, but he didn't pitch necessarily smart, and he didn't really have much. I didn't see a whole lot from him, man. So I completely disagree with you, Sean. I don't think Nasty Nestor is back. I, this I think this is Nasty Nestor. Unless you think this is what Nasty Nestor is, and he's back. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. I think this is it. I think this is him. I think this is a, he's a four inning guy and he needs to throw smoke and mirrors in order to get out. I, and that's what that whole herky jerky fake throw over a home plate was. It just spoke to me that I got nothing, guys. <laughs> I've got absolutely nothing today. So I'm just going to try and throw some smoke and mirrors to try and get out of this. That's what it said to me. That didn't say anything that was particularly positive, in my opinion. It was a little, uh, it was actually kind of cringy for me, to be honest. And wasn't it a bulk? Is that not a bulk? I don't even know what a bulk is anymore because. Uh, that's true. I, think it was I thought it was. It was just <laughs> weird. I mean, what are you doing, man? Just throw a pitch. You never see Garrett Cole doing that. <laughs> you never see anyone that actually has good stuff pretending to throw when you're supposed to throw because you're a pitcher. That's it. Yeah, I mean. If he if he was pitching the way he was a couple of years ago when he had that you know that weird leg kick and wind up, I, I'm not even thinking about it. But I mean, right now we, we we can't afford to be. Hold on, I got a dog problem. The dog has see the dog's pissed off too. Um, what's up to Spencer in the chat? I'll, t um, yeah. Once we get Tats back, we'll get let him finish his his point there. But yeah, look. Nestor Cortez has to be uh he has to be better, but at the same time, I think this is what he is. I don't think he's gonna be much better than that. If he's playing the Marlins every game, he might be six, seven inning pitcher, but it sucks because he was two years ago an all-star, and you wonder if that injury from last year is still bugging him, or if the league did catch up to him. Is it the pitch clock? What is it? You can't live with 86 miles an hour with little movement right over the middle to one of the best hitters in baseball and, and not expect to get yes. killed. And he got killed. And that was his biggest mistake of the day. Uh, and then he almost let it spiral out of control. And I think and I, I forgot who came in after him, but the bullpen was kind of taxed. It just had a double header the day before. Thank God for Cody Poteet. We'll get to him in a minute. But the Yankees had to use that bullpen more than they wanted to. And 
Nestor Cortez was hoping hoping to give them length. He just had a, what, a seven-inning, eight-inning start. You're hoping he can give you another six or seven to keep that bullpen well-rested going into Toronto, but he didn't do the job. So, I mean, again, what well, is, is Nestor Cortez? Is the first Cortez? time you've ever seen El Duque compared to, compared to Nestor Cortez? Absolutely not. Nest, no, no. Uh, yes, it is the first time, actually. I wish you don't, <laughs> don't compare El Duque to Nestor Cortez. El Duque had the, the high kick... And that was it. And then he would just pitch. He wouldn't fake a yes. throw. He wouldn't swing his leg around six times. It's fun and all, but let's let's not let's not compare Thank El Duque you. to well, Nestor. Duque had a killer curveball. He had a beautiful yeah. curveball. I used to sit in the stadium. I used to sit in the bleachers watching El Duque pitch every five days. I loved to watch him pitch. He was a legit pitcher, man. He was a legit number two, number three, and he was an absolute beast in the playoffs. Uh, you would ride him, man, on the, right on his back, baby, and he would uh, he would carry you through to, to, to play on victories. He, uh, Nestor Cortez just doesn't have great stuff. They're not they're not comparable. He has to do smoke and mirrors. No, uh, and, and you know my final point with with, with Cortez, you know, the game was you know we didn't have the game in hand for you to start getting cute. You know, it's not like we put up you know seven in the first and you want to, you know work on that, you know, that deceptive, de you know, delivery, you know, and to work within the pitch clock, that, like we talked about, you know, after his last start. It's, it, it was, it was not the right timing for it. You know, I, I don't mind trying a little something different, trying to get, you know, be a little deceiving. I'm fine with that. I just thought the timing of it, I, I would have picked a different spot. You know, that would have been something to do darn, you know, near the tail end of the Marlins game. You know, do that in um, spring. Yeah, do it in the spring. But I, I, I really. You know, what if he dropped the ball and he got a balk? He'd be, he'd be screaming at him. So. Have been a balk yeah. Anyway. But. <laughs> 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 Hello to the chat. What, well, Donald? Shall we say hello to the chat? Absolutely, we should. All right. Uh, Sunil says El Duque's Epis pitch was glorious. Good morning, Sunil. Hope you're having a good morning. Sean Browning, Schmidt and Poutit were solid. Very good point, Sean. Completely agree. I thought, uh, particularly Poutit. Schmidt, again, he's great for the first three innings, and then he starts to tail off spectacularly in the fourth and fifth. I keep saying it. He doesn't have the stuff for the third time around the order. He just doesn't have it. He just doesn't have it right now. But he's perfect in the first couple of innings. He's fantastic. But uh, Poutit was excellent. He's somebody that we could uh, definitely look to to use more in, in, in the future. I, I hope that he gets a permanent bullpen spot. Good to see uh, Mr. Barros in the chat. Salute to you. Mello, my favorite Nick of all time. Dude is a cancer at second. And forever it's the Glaber Torres. Yankees need to trade Torres in the deadline. Um, I We're not going to trade Torres in the deadline, but... Um, and I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the C word to describe him at second. He's just a space cadet at second. And it ain't good. It ain't good because when the chips are down, you don't want a space cadet at second base. I completely agree. Salute to Spence. Spence checking in from Philadelphia. Well, I hope you're doing okay, man. I hope your health is okay. And I hope it all works out for you in Philly. Um what we got here. Sunil says, Don Clark, we talking Dan Evan Clark. I, I guess, I guess we are. Uh, <laughs> um, Sean says, Hey, guardians are a good team. Yeah. You're not wrong. Man. You're not wrong. And if he, Nestor still managed to strike out six guys, God knows how he managed to do that. Demon D 2024, still believing world series champions. I completely agree with you. I actually feel very, very positive. They just need to fix this infield defense. And then, uh, and uh, hope that our, our boy Cole is fully healthy. And if so, I feel really damn good about this team because this offense is absolutely fire. Scored seven runs in a bad day. That's not a bad thing. So we can, uh, we're going to be all right. We're going to be fine. I completely do believe in that. Um, we got Stevie B. Salute. OG DeReal. Salute to you. Um, we got Anthony Garcia. Salute to you. Jonathan. Salute to you. Um, Jonathan regards to Torres says he gets a qualifying offer but is not re signed. I, I agree with you, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, Demon D says, Yeah, I'm getting tired of Glaber bum, and then on top of that, Riz was not looking good. Uh, he ain't looking good, nope, he definitely isn't. Um, 
Dev says, good, I missed the game yesterday. Oh, God, that was one ugly-ass game. But it was fun. It was a fun game. It was a thriller. It just didn't work out the way we wanted it. Uh, but it was still a fun game, um, which is different than any game that I watched last year because those games were snoots fest. The games this year have been fire. So this Yankee team have, have turned up. Every single day they're turning up ready, ready for business. So I think there's a lot to be excited about. I really do feel that this team is destined to make a World Series um, as long as Garrett Cole is fully healthy when he gets back. Um, Medina, Stevie B, salute to both of you. And, yeah, good morning, my people. And Frederick, salute to Frederick, too. You know, no, it's, the, the whole gang is here, you know, and it, it's always good to see, especially on a Monday to kick off the week. But before we get into the awards, let, let, let's talk a little little positivity here on a Monday. Let's talk about uh, Poteet. Let's talk about Schmidt and their outings. Um, Poteet, look, when they first announced that they were going to bring him in with the doubleheader, I was like, I wonder why they didn't choose Warren. You know, I know he hasn't had the best starts, but I figured he I, – I, I thought that Warren would have been the move. But I wasn't upset that Poti guy. I didn't want to make that clear. But, damn, he was – the quick outs. It's, you know, aside from his stuff and, and the, his you know ability to locate, he had the he, – they thought they were going to attack him early and just beat the crap out of him. And he, that was not the case. He was getting really quick outs, and I really, you know, I thought that was what was most impressive. Yeah, and I think but the thing with Warren is he had just pitched like a couple of days ago, so they weren't going to have him pitch again. Also, he hasn't looked great in the minor leagues so far, but Poteet, man, we said it when, he, when we signed him. I was like, this is an arm to keep an eye out for because Cashman – rarely misses on these kind of guys and it's only one start but it was a good one because it was a double header how do you save the bullpen you get a blowout win and you get a six innings from your fill in or your 27th man so cody poteet did his job and he certainly put his name at the top of the list for the uh for the next man up when we need another starting pitcher because we will at some point it's just a matter of time he looked great and i know it was against a uh, iffy lineup but he navigated it, man. He got the job done, and that's what—that's all you can ask for from a guy that's filling in. I was kind of surprised when they skipped over Luis Heel, but they're gonna have him start tonight, I think, which is fine. Man, he, he did it. He did his job. Good. Hats off to Cody Poteet. That's an excellent job, and I hope we see him again soon. Yeah, I agree. I thought Poteet looks really good. I'd like to see more starts from him, to be honest. I, I thought that he had a lot of good stuff, a lot of good quality stuff. Um. There's no doubt about it. He looked better than Nestor Cortez in the last start. Looked much better. He had better stuff. Much better stuff. Major league quality stuff. So um, yeah, I, I want to see a little bit more from him. We've got options in our rotation. Uh, you got Will oh, Warren. Sure. He'll he'll be an option down the line. Go Clean Beater, who uh, is being stretched out as a starter. Um, although I think he he was fantastic think, the other day. By the way, yeah, Beater had a great start in AAA. I love Clayton Beater. What what was his uh, stat line? I think he struck out like eight or something like that. I got to get the full line, but I was keeping an eye on it thanks to uh, Yankees Farm from NYYU, Dane and Los, to do a great job. Once I pull that up, I'll give you his full line. I know he was yeah, dealing. that's why they stretched him Dan out, because he only threw three pitches the last time. He was lights out. He couldn't be better. But uh, they're stretching him out as a starter to be an option um, down the line. So, you know, these are positive op- these are positive options. I'm actually not feeling too bad about our starting rotation. Our actual starting rotation is surprising me a little bit. He went five innings, gave up one hit, no runs, eight strikeouts, no walks. Holy start. mother of God, that's yeah. incredible. That's literally perfect. No, it, look, the, the, the pitching has not been our problem. The, the pitching is really – there might be a game or two, but they have not gotten lit up. Yeah, so – I know, I just so I know a lot of people are like oh you know without Cole we we can't you know it's going to be hard to sustain this that might be possible but we're also seeing you know the effects of what we talked about in the off season the offense is going to kind of I don't want to say mask you know the the, the lack of you know um, headline talent in the rotation but. You're starting to see where I was saying that the offense is going to pick up the uh, the pitching. 
where they're not going to need to have a perfect game every day. They can have, you know, an, an inning here or there where it's a little rough, but the bats are going to back them up. And this is, it's exactly what we're seeing. Yeah. But when you get guys like Poteet, you know what? You get called up in a doubleheader, you know, you, Cleveland, yeah, they might not have the strongest and deepest lineup, but they, you know, on paper, they're a first place team. So, you know, to Morning navigate season. that lineup like that, what's going on, bro? To navigate a lineup like that, you know, where you're only getting a call the day before, hey, guess what? You're coming up. You're coming up to start a game. You know, and his poise at the plate, uh, on his poise at the mound, was phenomenal. He was not intimidated in the moment at all. You know, and that's where you see the body language is so important. Because if you could, sh- if you're showing them that you're not intimidated, that you're here to do what you got to do, then you already have them mentally beat. You know, because that was one of the things I was I, I was in, in the in a chat with, with a couple of the guys yesterday. I'm looking at Holmes after his first two pitch. You just saw he was so tense. He was, you know, he just didn't have the. Right, I did not like his body language. You know. So I, I was well. very nervous about him on yeah, the mound. Yeah. Hmm? Cleveland's actually pitched well yesterday, in my opinion. It was a, the, the outing previously where he, yeah. he's lucky he didn't give up the home run. There was a home run in most stadiums, but um, for the most part, I've actually been all right with with him. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's fine. decent. Yeah, no, I, I was I, I was surprised that yesterday's outing surprised me. I was waiting after the, you know after that first batter. I, I just thought he just looked a little little tense in the shoulders. I'm going, uh, I said I don't know about him tonight, you know. But he got through it, you know. And they did what they were supposed to do. Like I said earlier, they were getting the ground balls. They were keeping the ball in the park. That's all you could ask for, you know. Maybe because it was a tie game. And yeah, you know, kind of moving on the slider. Is slider is slider's turning into a better pitch this year. Yeah. Um, been quite happy with his slider and his uh, his sinkers there. Um, yeah, he's been okay. He's been okay. Yeah, yeah, Jake, Jake, totally had, had... Better but, than the um, alternative where he's walking the whole freaking lineup and giving up six runs or whatever. So I'll take yeah. this from Clay Holmes right now. It's not <laughs> perfect, but it's better than what he was for a month last year in August yeah. where he was just unusable. What do you think about Caleb Ferguson yesterday? I thought he was fine. I, I've had no issues with it. Well, if not for the, I mean, if not for the Glaber play, you wonder yeah. if we win that game. But his stuff, he looked good his first couple of outings, but then his last couple, I think he pitched like twice in the series. His first outing in the series, he looked okay. And then yesterday, you were kind of like, uh, I don't know why he was left in so long. I felt like he should have yeah. took him out. Oh, maybe yeah. put maybe put Marinaccio in there or something because I don't know why. Oh, he's God, so, maybe not him. So Did bad. you see the ball bomb that he gave up? Whoa. We we have no options at this point, right? Because they're trying to save the bullpen. You can't use Hamilton again because he's been getting tagged recently. He's been able to get out of it, but we used Gonzalez yesterday. We used Birdie yesterday. Our options are kind of limited, and we have a series coming up. I think Marinaccio might have been the only guy to go to. Oh. I was surprised, but you know, you kind of had to just let Ferguson stay in there because we need to save this bullpen for the next series. So it would not shock me if another move is made. Uh, Bro, what before has happened this game to What has fallen off a cliff? Him? He was hurt last year, and I wonder if that's just like a nagging thing now. He might just be a quad A player, and maybe you move him for like the way we did with Floreal, who killed us a series, of course, but maybe they do something like that with him next year. I don't know, because he looks just he's, compared dude, to what he was two years ago. He's throwing yeah. cookies out of the plate. Absolute kinky. Those pitches were going absolutely yard, baby. They were getting crushed. He looks horrifying. Yeah, it's been it's been rough. <laughs> Boy. Well, no, he's he's been rough. The rest I've been very very happy with, to be honest. For the most part, I have no issues with. Uh, but one player who isn't a quad A player is Esteban Florio. Uh, I think that's my only issue, right, with yesterday. Labor Torres, I can't, I can't comprehend what's going on in his mind sometimes when he plays second base. So I'm, I'm just gonna forget about that. In terms of pure game management, why would you throw a fastball to somebody that you know so well that can only hit fastballs? That's Esteban Florial. You've had him in your system for God knows how long. You never gave him an opportunity. 
The only time you gave him an opportunity was the tail end of last year, and he looked really damn good. He can hit fastballs. So here's an idea, Trevino, and Blake and Boone or whoever was behind this idea. Don't throw my fastball. Wow. Throw him a fastball right down the deck. Throw him a fastball right down the deck, and it went absolutely yard. That guy can crush pitches. Stop it. What are you doing? That was dumb. Really dumb. Yeah, no, look. As soon as he hit that one home run, I was like, "Yeah, that, that's his, this is his revenge series." You know, the look what you gave up, but he's batting, you know, what, 160? 190, you know, with, so, with, 190, 190 with two home yeah. runs, two solo shots, conveniently against the Yankees. So he hasn't been good, but when he plays us, he's Superman. Go figure. But that's every everybody we give up on. Yeah. You always waiting for those revenge games, you know. And he had his good for him. You know, he was a player that I liked for a long time. I did. You know, he was one of those I guys that we moved, we moved on from that you hope he found a home yeah. and was able to succeed because he did nothing wrong except till yesterday when he kind of ruined it for us. But I do like this, you know, the, the statement here from Steven. You know, an, another positive to take away from last night is the fact we came back and got the game tied up against Class A. Yeah, you know, so. That's yeah, what should have been the story. Yeah. So that and he's supposed to be one of the, the most uh, you know the more of the elite pitcher and of, of baseball. So the, this that's why I said the, the bats I'm not I'm, I'm not too concerned about. The one thing that really needs to be cleaned up is the defense. That's gonna that's gonna start to come back and bite us in the ass if we don't get that cleaned up. But I think that's why I was so mad at Glaber Torres mistake in the ball uh, in the bottom of the 10th inning is because it took away the story which should have been anthony volpe's incredible game tying rbi against one of the best closers in baseball that's what should have been the story that was a hell of a pitch it was not a bad pitch it was 101 miles an hour and somehow volpe managed to time it perfectly and get in the gap between two outfielders that's a hell of a play that should have been the story so I'm very frustrated at Gleyber Torres for that. Read the room, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. Before we get into the awards, just want to do a little, little housekeeping. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that sub button, share this out with anybody you could think of. And this community is continuing to grow. Um, we are on the road to 700, as it says on the bottom of your screen. And if you feel so inclined, you can scan that code in the top of your corner, share, uh, you know, treat us to a little cup of coffee, help keep the lights on. No pressure, just an option for you guys. Um, so, Donald, let's get some awards out. Let's do it. Um, MVP of the series. Let's start with uh, Jermaine. That's me. Uh, let's give the MVP award to my man, Anthony Volpe. My man, my shortstop, my now leadoff hitter. The kid, the kid's here. The kid has arrived. He's looked fantastic. He had an outstanding series. And I think, spoiler alert, he's gonna get two awards from me today. He was phenomenal. So hats off to my shortstop. Love it. Tats. Yeah, no, Vol Volpe had probably one of his better series this this season. Um he, he was involved. It looked like he was involved with everything. And yeah, no, Vol Volpe got it for me this time. And me, I'm going to Anthony Volpe. Volpe, just, it was close because there was actually a lot of guys that that, uh, that had good series. Juan Soto was freaking phenomenal, again, as always. Um, yeah. But, but Volpe always seemed to come through. Uh, so I, I think Volpe gets the MVP of the series. Outstanding series from my boy. Okay, low key MVP. Let's start with Uncle Tats. Ah, uh, this one I had. I I wanted to go with a pitcher because the pitching I thought was really good. But this is going to be a little outside the box. I'm going with, with Waldo. I think the home run in the first game to put us ahead. Set the mm -hmm. tone for the rest of the series. 
especially after not being in the lineup for a couple mm-hmm. of days. Being able to come in, pick up right where you left off, impact with the bat, set the tone, low-key MVP for me. I, I completely uh, – I think you've got a really good point there, man. I don't think there was – that's uh, outside the box at all. I think that's a really good good choice. Um, Robinho. Oh, captain, my captain, Aaron Judge. He's awoken. The beast is arisen. The judge is here. He's back. Aaron Judge, my low-key MVP. Okay. I'm going low-key Juan Soto. I mean, to be honest, there's an argument he probably should have been MVP. Uh, he was always on base, and his at-bats were always phenomenal and uh, hit a, a, a three-run bomb that didn't wake up our announcers, but it woke me up. It was freaking awesome. Uh, so How bad that is great. John Flaherty? Oh, oh my God, so bro. Bad. Just just you wait, guys. Oh, my God. Uh, let's go to the fans. Uh, who who have the fans got as low-key uh, and the MVP? Because uh, – forgot i think from what i read volpe oh, got the mvp it was a clean sweep for volpe yeah 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 i agree and so like who's being soto and petite yeah frederick's got petite we got three Mr. Petites. Has judge sean has soto stevie b has soto woof it's close who's got it we got stevie we b's got, got petite and if he got petite yeah. too yeah, so that's Poteet. three for Poteet. Poteet wins. Congratulations to Poteet. All right. Um, best pitcher award. For me, it's it's actually a no-brainer. It's Poteet. He wins the yes. best pitcher award. Um, let's go to um, the Rob Dog. Cody Poteet. Stepped yeah. up. The big spot stepped up. Uncle Tats? No, uh, Poteet. You know, like I said before, you know, called up last second. You know, you can't plan for a doubleheader. You know, um, he was available. He got the call up. But he definitely shown, you know, shine where, where it meant where we needed it. Doubleheader sweeps are not easy. He landed it for us. Poteet. Clean sweep. Poteet across the board. The fans go with Poteet. He was the best pitcher. Okay. Um, let's go with Aaron Boone's rating out of 10. What should we go with? Uh, Tats, I think he had another great series. I'll, I'll give him, I'm giving him a 10. I, 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 I like the consistency in the lineup, no panic moves. He uh managed the lineups for the double header very well, um, uh, didn't try to get too cute with it. Um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't overreact. He didn't panic. So, I thought that he made. I, I think he made all the right moves. He made the right calls with the bullpen with yesterday. So, uh, I give him. Power. I have no issues with anything he did. To be yeah. fair, either. Um, looks like a nine out of ten for the fans. We got uh, two nines and an eight point five for Mr. Bezel. We'll round that up to a nine Just one number. Just one number, guys. What, what, what is this? eight point five? We're not. <laughs> There's no decimals here. Sunil, Sunil's always trying to spin the wheel with these things. 9.33. You know what, Sunil? Take a point off for him. You're giving him a six. I'm giving you a three for your votes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I have no argument with anything that Ben did. I love the fact that there was a consistent lineup and he didn't tank one of the games. Normally, since Aaron Boone has been manager, um, using the, the analytics guys as the – as the as the puppet masters, we would always have a tank lineup in one of the two games. Always. Always, always, always. The fact that we had a consistent lineup, same lineup, was excellent. And we went for it in both games. Love that. Only issue was throwing a fastball to, to Florio. That was bananas. But that's more of a Trevino thing. I, that's nothing to do with Boone. That was yeah. Trevino. Uh, yeah. I don't know why Trevino, who's supposed to be a platinum glove Catcher would uh, would would call for a fastball against a really good fastball, dead red fastball hitter. That's just the dumbest thing ever. So nothing to do with Boone in that, I guess. Um, defense was nothing to do with Boone either. I'm giving Boone a nine. No issue there. Uh, Rubinio. Yeah, I, I was teetering between nine and ten, so I'll give him a I'll give him a nine. I I don't. 
no, actually, I'm gonna give him a ten because I don't, I can't find anything that I really complained about. He didn't cost us a game. It wasn't his fault the defense couldn't field. I don't blame him for leaving Ferguson in too long because he really didn't have any other options. So he yeah. played with the hand yeah. he was dealt. Yep. Let's go with the clutch award. Uh, let's go with Uncle Tats. Uh, I'm going with Volpe. Beautiful. Took that late hit yesterday. Get put in the you know no who was that Rizzo that had the two runs. Sorry. So Rizzo well, was I'm giving the RBI run. that would save the game, but then there was Rizzo that gave us the two uh, the go ahead. The two run lead. Rizzo, yeah. I was giving the clutch award to after having a rough game at the uh, uh, at the, at the glove. Um, being able to kind of redeem himself with, with a very clutch hit. Um. And unfortunately, the defense, the next, yeah, you know, collapse behind them after that. But I, I, I'll give Rizzo the clutch award. All right. Rizzo. It's been a rough Rizzo. series with the glove to be able to still stay, keep his head in the game. And if it wasn't for everything after that, that hit would have gave us, given us the sweep. Yeah. So decent argument there. Rob. He's getting two for me today. Anthony Volpe. That is such a tough at bat. Against Class A, in that spot, Anthony Volpe, and he's that was a huge hit because he turned it over at the right there to Soto to try to do damage after him, and that's all, all you can ask for out of the leadoff hitter. I'm giving it two awards today to Volpe. Yeah, I'm once again I'm with Rob with this one. I don't think there's an argument for me. It's, it has to be Volpe. I mean, he faced down one of the best closers in baseball that throws 100 to 101 mile an hour. And he was completely unfazed. He was right on it and absolutely lined it, roped it in the gap. Um, in that spot, bottom of the ninth, game on the line. And the runner wasn't even in scoring position. It was in first base. And he managed to hit it well enough to get that guy home. That's is, that is badass, man. Bottom of the ninth, two outs. That's just badass. So Volpe is the clutch award for me. The fans, let's go. Demon D. He's got Volpe. Mr. Barros has Rizzo. Uh, Frederico has Rizzo. Sean has Volpe. Well, this is fun. Clutch Award. Sunil says between Soto and Cabrera. Oh, pick um, one. Pick, pick one, one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> pick one. Is there nine you, points? You've used the same yeah. joke twice today yeah. with the Hulk thing. <laughs> you talking about the Jackson 5. You're on a roll today, Sunil. Keep it up. 9.23 out of 10 says Soto and Cabrera. Well, none of them are going to be involved in this one, it looks like. Let's go with, well, it looks like we've got two for Volpe and we've got two for Rizzo. Next one wins, guys. Next vote wins. Let's go. Come on. Going once. <laughs> going twice. Nice. Going face face face. Smiley face. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie B. <laughs> oh my god, JT Gardner. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Very funny, JT. <laughs> Good job. Dereal oh. goes full B as well. I agree with that. Okay, we've got the clutch award. Now, my favorite award, of course. Oh, boy. The take the L award. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a whole list, baby. <laughs> I've got a whole freaking list. Uh, who takes the L for you, Rob Dog? I want to give a special shout out to Michael K for not going to Cleveland for this series to making us have to suffer through three games of John Flaherty calling this game. Sounded like I was in a retirement home watching golf. Are you kidding me? Anthony Volpe with a absolute rocket to right center field to tie the game against class a and you're just standing there like well it's a good hit on <laughs> i think sunil might have called a better game than that but no my actual take the l award goes to the infield defense because they cost us literally they gave us an l so special shout out to michael k you big-headed goof for missing this series but the actual <laughs> award goes to the infield defense <laughs> <laughs> uncle tats i love that Right, it's the defense gets the yell collectively because it, 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 you know, a lot of my vitriol to start off was towards Torres, but it, all over, all over the infield, it was just very, very sloppy series. So, the collectively, they're all getting the yell. Okay, I've got a few. Uh, first of all, I have to give a special shout out to the 
um, the social media team of the Cleveland Indians. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they are the biggest absolute bunch of losers where they trolled the Yankees and the fans going, oh, what the Yankees are pissed now. Come on, guys. You lost the series. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? What are you doing here, you sad losers that don't with a team that doesn't even have a name? Yeah, it's the Indians, not the Guardians. Fuck off, stupid team. But still, um, the Take the L award for me has to be Glaber Torres, I'm afraid. Uh, he, he cost us a series with that horrible series that he had. Really, really bad. Um, so he gets that. Let's go with the fans. What have the fans got? We've got one for defense, Torres, one for Torres, Rizzo, Torres. one for the infield. One for the defense, so that counts for two. Um, take the L award. Stop giving us Kid Rock's a strange son as our bat boy. Uh, okay, Rock, I've been jumping out. See, good the job. Right, okay. Um, I take it back, Sunil. You wouldn't have called a better game. I take it all back. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sunil's on fire today. Take the L award, Sunil. is another <laughs> candidate. Sunil is already... Catching up on the on on the L's. Um, to make a new award we'll for him. The, I think we'll go with the defense here. I think the fans are going defense. I, I yeah. think that's I think that's what we'll go with. That's the collective of it. Yeah, it seems to be collective. And I've got a final award to give. Um, no one deserves the prick award. I have to say, no one is quite bad enough to get the prick award this time. So we'll we'll put that on ice. But the it's a deep fly ball by Nick Castellanos award for the worst announcing I have ever heard in the history of the world goes to John Flaherty. Mr. Flash, never, ever announce a game again. Holy God, you're bad. Holy God, you're bad. Honestly, I thought Costas' um, calling of the Guardians-Yankees Playoff series was bad. No, no, this takes the, this takes the cake. Holy God, what Flaherty and Nelson were chilling out talking about weights on bats. Brad Osmus's body apparently looked so Brad good. They had to talk about that. Brad Osmus, give him the they were talking about prick weights word. on your well, well, guys. In the nineties used what size weights they used on their bats. And they were droning on about it for days. Days. It was like a 12-hour nightmare. He called that game like he was sitting in his front lawn watching weeds grow. Because that was how excited he was. through the. I mean, what about Volpe's line drive? It was so boring. <laughs> I didn't even realize. You would never guess it was the bottom of the ninth of a regular season game. You would no. think it was spring training. And it's a line drive in the gap. And he's not going to get it. And that's an RBI for Volpe. That was the it. The game is tied. The game is tied. Against the best closer in baseball, who everybody yeah. in Yankee land wants to trade for, Anthony Volpe just smashed one against him. Wow, that's a big hit. Huh, Jeff? Yeah, you yeah, see the weights yeah. that Osmus used? <laughs> <laughs> that was it but by far the worst by far the worst was the call on Soto that was remarkable and it's a deep fly and it's going back back gone a three run home run for Juan Soto so, Nelson, what, 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 what was your workout routine back in 1998? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was Ryan Rucco. They couldn't have gotten Rucco? What, what's yeah, what's he going been? on here? I, him I actually like you know, on, the, on the broadcast. He's really good. Good God, that was bad, man. He, he was brutal. Holy fuck. How is it possible to be that bad at announcing? How could you not be excited by Juan Soto hitting a three-run bomb? And he described it like he was getting a colonoscopy. <laughs> Jesus. 
That might get that might actually give you a little more oomph if you yeah, were to actually. You know what? That actually would have helped him. He needed a live colonoscopy for him to, to wake him up because he was asleep for the twelve hour broadcast. He's like, yeah, this is. A, he actually said at one point, yeah, this is a long day. Bro, it's a double header. You're supposed to be excited. What the fuck? Oh my god! Yeah, all day baseball, and it, it, it was almost like there was. It was such an inconvenience for them to be there. Yes, you're right. He 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 he, he announced that game like it was a massive inconvenience to him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, Ruko was doing radio. All right, that makes sense. All right. Oh yeah. Can we appreciate Ken Singleton now? Like, can Ken Singleton come out of retirement? Can we get yes. anybody else to do play by play for the Yes Network? Because if we're going to be watching them and old Pearhead's not going to be around for the series, and I'm not really too fond of him either, but Jesus Christ, can we get somebody else to call the games? Maybe give him a fans game. Or, or you know what? Next time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if it's Flaherty, I'm just going to turn it off and put on the radio broadcast because I'd rather listen to John Sterling get a fly ball wrong and call it a home run <laughs> than listen to John Flaherty sleepwalk through a nine inning game or 18 no, innings of a baseball. Excited. Unbelievable. What is Flaherty's excuse? I mean, John Sterling is like triple his age and he's still got a million times more energy. Mm-hmm. John Flaherty, who honestly treated that game like it was an inconvenience. Like, they could have had anybody. What about Curry? Why couldn't Curry Mer- do it? Meredith Mer- Rockovich. Mer- been, she's got a nice voice for radio. Yep. Well, we, need TV. we need t- someone on TV. Uh, I, I take TV. it back. I'd much rather have Flaherty over this choice right here. I take, <laughs> back. take back everything I just said. John Flaherty, <laughs> you did a great job. Because Andy. nobody should, should be subjected to that. Play Bring back play Cameron play. Mabin. From that. Uh, <laughs> no. Not no. Bro, he's better Maybe. than Flaherty. He's better than Flaherty. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, hope, yo, know, look, I mean, even Sterling's been out. Yo, know, he's been under the weather. So they've had Justin Shackle working with Susan, and he's not all that better than fucking Flaherty, to be honest with you. You know, it's. God, it, it when John official and I, I actually I think after this season John's done. Um, he's working he sure. pretty much part time right now anyway. He's you know he's eighty five years old, so which is why I'm glad that they're having this good of a season because I, I nothing would make it perfect you know for John to retire after winning the series. Uh, I, I think that would close his book out. Perfectly. So, but that, that's just, I, I, so I, I just want that for him really bad. As much as I want a championship for myself. Um, no, I agree, man. So to hopefully, Sterling. Yeah, hopefully by the time they start the next homestand, they'll have Sterling back in the booth. Because, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a treasure. I love listening to John. You said, yeah, listen, it's, 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 so, the, the so. mistakes are part of his charm. You know, the, yeah, that, that's kind of what makes him him. You know, because he just he doesn't miss a beat. He just keeps going, and you know sometimes, you know, Susan will look over, and go, "What the hell did you just say?" <laughs> and but, salute to Susan Waldman. She's a goat as well. So yeah. we do have a couple of good announcers. Unfortunately, Michael K's <laughs> backup is horrible. Well, hopefully Ruko can stop calling. Hopefully that um, NCAA tournament's over soon. Because um, my goodness, I miss Ryan Ruko. That, that guy better be the future of Yankees broadcast. Some capacity. I don't know if it's on the radio or on TV, but he's great he on the radio. Needs to, he's so good. Yeah. That's the one benefit I get of getting to hear him at times call Nets games because that team stinks. But if Ruko is calling it, at least I can enjoy it. They have good announcers, Ian Eagle and sometimes Ruko. I think he calls a Liberty game too. I can't listen to John Flaherty. I can't even listen to Michael K at times. That, that voice gets to me too. I don't know. The yes, and yes, network needs better announcers. But so Neil's not right. that good I mean, either. I mean, Rizzo. I felt bad for Rizzo. I keep going Rizzo. Ruko. He 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 announced a ton of games last year, and they're all meaningless, and they're all like eight nothing losses. And he still made it exciting. I would have loved him to have announced yesterday's game. He would have been like jumping around. It would have been awesome. So, yeah, bring back Ruko, please. Yeah, I, I think we'll see more Ruko once the um, college uh, basketball is over. 
So I think he's got he's contracted to that as well. Um, so, and to Shaw's point, yeah, they put John and Susan in the Hall of Fame just so you, you know, in case you didn't know, um, Susan Wallman does have um, some mentions in the women's women of baseball section. And so Susan's been very, you know, she has been recognized um, in the Hall of Fame. They're just not officially Hall of Famers, but we know they are. What's going on, Michael Caputo? Good to see you uh, come on to hear the sign off. But <laughs> uh, we miss you in the chat, buddy. But it's going to wrap things up for us on this Monday. Hope everybody did enjoy the show. If you haven't already, smack that like button, hit that sub button, share this out with your friends, your family, the strangers on the corner. This has been the Best Strike Chronicles, where fans become family. And as always, as I always say, we have pinch eyes of pride and play hard.